So tonight, we want to look at a few things. Um, there's not going to be a lot of uh, kerfuffle, so we're going to go straight into it. I want to talk to you about the techniques I used to shoot that, uh, that video just now. And they have basically three things that I want to talk about that, you, that I hope will give you some technical insight as to how I made that video. I'm, I'm going to talk about lighting, and that is how to make your uh, subjects evenly exposed. I'm going to talk about syncing, and in this syncing, I'm referring to lip syncing. Um, how to look into the camera and how to uh, sing into the camera such that you don't need to memorize your lyrics. You can just look into the camera and, and have the lyrics uh, displayed in front of the lens, but somehow uh, you cannot see the, uh, the The camera doesn't capture the lyrics. It just captures me looking straight into the camera. There's a way to do that, and that is by means of using the teleprompter. So I will be talking about the teleprompter in section 1B. And then in section 1C, I want to talk about shooting B-roll. And B-roll basically means um, having different perspectives and shooting the same, uh, uh, basically shooting the same uh, video, the same subject, but from different perspectives to give uh, a different, uh, different angles, different, a different look, different feel for fillers, transitions, and for basically uh, um, to make it uh, to keep the visual interest of the video uh, um, higher than if you just have one static camera. Not that one static camera by itself, like if you have the whole song with just one camera angle like this, that's perfectly fine. Um, if you want, but if you want to stir some visual interest, we have some way of making the video more interesting by using B-roll, and I'll talk about what the B-roll is. Then of course there's Q&A, which um, while I've put it at the end of the video, feel free to stop me at any time to ask questions, and we can really benefit from one another uh, if I, you know, if we know about each other's situations. So I encourage you to ask questions as we go along. Let's go to the first section on lighting. And this is the most important to get a nice, clean looking uh, piece of video footage. So how much light do you actually need? It really depends on your camera, lens or smartphone. You know, the lower that you can bring down the f-stop on your lens, um, the more light that the lens is going to be able to see and receive. And so therefore, uh, you may not need so much lighting if your lens is a good lens or if your smartphone is able to process uh, footage at a lower f-stop. But you must be wary of the depth of field. While the low f-stop number is really good for a big bright image such as this, um, I'm actually talking to you and using my DSLR as the webcam and this is a f1.8 lens. Um, it is now set to autofocus which will track my face but you can see the, the back of my room uh, uh, office here is essentially a bit out of focus. That's what we call um, the, the depth of field. The depth of field is that little band of space beyond which things get blurry. If you go too far in front of the camera, it could you be out of focus. If you go too far away from the camera, you also get out of focus. And that, re that really depends on the lens's depth of field. Uh, the, this is one of the things you must be wary of. The lower the f-stop on your lens, the quicker you'll be out of focus if you're not able to track your, uh, your subject. The best free light source available is the sun. You know, nothing beats bright light like sunlight. Uh, the video that you saw just now, Christ, I Hope and Life and Death, I essentially shot it at 11 a.m. And uh, I basically had to scout the location a little bit. We went to the ballet studio at MSM because the ballet studio is the brightest at around 10 to 11 a.m. That's when the sun is basically before noontime and uh, the, the ambient light from the windows is the brightest at a point in time. So I decided to shoot the video there and you, could, you can see that the, all the, the various camera angles were quite nicely exposed even though I didn't have an external lighting kit. Uh, I do have an external, I do have a lighting kit, a lighting rig of uh, consisting of two different lights and I'll show you what those are later on. Uh, but yeah, if you prepare beforehand, if you scout your location, if you know, understand where the light comes in at your location, you might be able to get away with just using sunlight for your video. Of course, that's, uh, that's the best solution because it's free, but it can be very fickle. Um, there is a chance that clouds are going to roll over your uh, roll over the sun, you know, like cloud cover. And because sunlight 
uh, the, the nature of the light changes actually when the cloud comes over because basically the light gets refracted by the clouds and then that gives off a little bit of a different hue of blue. So um, this, so what you see right now on the screen, um, I had to shoot a sermon video from my home office and I started talking uh, when the sun was basically clear, there were no clouds and I thought, okay, you know what, this is the perfect time, I'm going to shoot my video right now. I didn't expect um, the clouds to come by <laughs> because, I mean, I had to shoot a, a summer video which is like 40 minutes long, right? And during that time, the, the clouds came and the exposure changed. The left-hand side is when there's no cloud cover with direct sun. My skin tones were okay because I set the camera up to have the skin tones have that kind of color. But as the video went on, I didn't change the settings and you can see on the right-hand side, the exposure went down and you can see that my skin tones became a little bit more pale because of the blue hue that clouds give off when, when you know they're passing over the sun. So long story short, you can use the sun for a for completely free light source, but you just need to know that there will be some changes to the exposure and the white balance when clouds roll by or when uh, even at the time of day um, there is. There's something called the golden hour in photography, and that is the time of uh, 6 p.m. Because and uh, near the evening, that's when the sun is at its. Uh, it's got the intensity is just right for really nice looking photos, and if you can uh, try to, you can try to shoot around at a time, you know, 6 p.m. Unfortunately for Singap for Singaporeans, 6 p.m. is also the time that kids play in the playground, and you know people take their dogs out for a walk. So I've never been able actually to shoot at that time. Uh, of the golden hour, as it were, um, it's uh, just because of 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 situations. Uh, if and when you can, do try. It's really quite a nice image when you shoot at six p.m. and and the sun is uh, not too bright. The sun is not uh, the the white balance doesn't change very off very much when uh, at six p.m. I mean, it's all very technical, but but uh, uh, but do try it out. It's it's something that's worth trying out. So. Um, if you don't have the sun, what kind of lighting can you use, and and what are the the standard practices to involving uh, lighting? And you can, uh, you it is possible to just use you know one light, one light source, uh, but it will look uh, there will be a certain look to it. Um, as I said before in the previous webinar, your camera isn't an, isn't very smart. Machines are not as smart as human beings. Your light. Your eyes adjust to lighting conditions. It, even if it's just a single source of light, you'll be able to uh, correctly expose the images, uh, the image of, of like all the rest of the items in the room, uh, even if it's just a single source of light. Your camera doesn't. Your camera will, uh, with one source of light, you're going to have shadows, you're going to have areas of high contrast, and that will look very, uh, uh, it's not bad. It's, it's very dramatic looking. But that's only because your camera uh, is not a smart device. It can't it can't adjust like our eyes can. To help the camera adjust and to help the camera uh, get even exposure in a dark setting, or if you need to, if you don't have the sun, you need to be in an enclosed space. We uh, there's something in the in video there's something in videography a, a practice called uh, three point lighting. Three point lighting, uh, as the name suggests, requires three sources of light. And the three sources of light, uh, and this is the technical part of the video, is the key light, which is your main light source, a fill light, which is, uh, as the name suggests, it helps to fill in uh, the spaces where the key light doesn't fill in, and you have the backlight, which is the light that's used to separate the subject from the background. Otherwise, if you don't have the backlight, you're, and you, you only have two lights, so if you have key and fill, what happens is you get a nice illuminated subject, but your subject looks like it's he's blended into the background. Not a bad image, not terrible, not the end of the world, but uh, to level up your footage, having the backlight really does help. And um, I did talk about, okay, my, <laughs> I didn't have the time to edit the slides here, but um, I mentioned here hard light and soft light. What's the difference? So lighting is, uh, I want you to imagine a, a light bulb. When you have a bare light bulb by itself, and you and you look at the bulb uh, with the light uh, emanating its light, it's actually very bright. Uh, it it is it is uh, 
uh, you can see that the light's a bit harsh. You can see the beams of light coming from it. Now, I want you to imagine the same bulb, but you put a lamp shade on the bulb and use it as a night light. What happens? The light becomes uh, a lot less harsh. The the you, instead of distinct rays of light, you get uh, you, you almost you get like a, a, a area sphere, you know, of light instead of of hard beams, and that actually is diffusion. It diffuses the the lamp shade is diffusing the the light bulb, the light from the light bulb. So hard light is when light is 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 like the the bare light bulb. There's nothing stopping it, nothing covering it. Soft light is diffused light, light that has uh, that that is spread out more, light that is uh, um, that instead of distinct beams, it's it's more like a uh, more like a spear of light, as it were. So uh, that's that's what I'm talking about when I mention hard light and soft light, and and it's a bit more clearer when you see the my lighting rig where I talk about. <clears throat> it's a bit more clear when I talk about uh, my lighting rig where my key light is diffused and my fill light is not diffused. Essentially, you want to set up the lights as follows. Uh, this diagram here is to give you a rough estimation of where the lights should be. If your subject is in the middle of a clock uh, and if the camera angle is, is uh, the camera is placed at 6 o'clock, uh, meaning that I'm looking right into the camera here, you want your key and your fill to be at your sides. Your key light is going to be, uh, and it doesn't have to be left. It, I mean, whether it's left on the right or right or left, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that the the lights are set up according to their function. The key light is the brightest light that's going to be your main source of illumination. It's going to give the most diffused uh, light onto your face, but because it only has uh, one source of light, when you shine the light this way, you're gonna have shadows created on the on the side that does not have the uh, it does not it, the the key light will shine your face and there'll be shadows created um, uh, which cannot be eliminated with just one source. You, therefore, you need the fill light, which is on the other side, to fill in that light to get rid of the shadows. There's actually a uh, there's actually a, a big art uh, uh, science and art to lighting. Uh, this diagram here is also for your your reference. If you can set up the lights to be uh, at that particular angle, at that particular intensity, uh, there are numbers here: one hundred percent, twenty percent, fifty percent. Excuse me. Those refer to the intensity of light uh, that you can set up with with the, the your lighting controls. And I leave that there for your your reading your reference. Uh, this is not a picture. There's actually. Um, it, the industrial standard is not just three points of light. They actually have like maybe five point lighting, six point lighting, seven point lighting even. Uh, and today, uh, and for most uh, amateur phot uh, videographers like myself, and I, I guess for most of you guys, we only want to concentrate on the key light, fill light, or the backlight or rim light, as they call it. Uh, we don't, we don't have the kind of money to get even more lights, you know, because some of these lighting rigs are really expensive. Um, I've I've seen. I have seen an eight thousand dollar light before, and and it is amazing. <laughs> and I imagine one light, uh, So you want a three point lighting? That's three of those lights together to get an amazing cinema level, cinema grade kind of footage. Okay, so I've recorded a little bit of, a, I've recorded some short videos to demo some things. So I'm gonna play this for you, and we can watch uh, how I set up my lighting rig. My I have two lights, uh, and. Uh, uh, I don't have three lights because I haven't bought my, my backlight yet, but I managed to get by by improvising one of the lights, and I'm going to let my video explain it. These are the two lights that I use for lighting my videos, and although I don't have a specific backlight, I do have two of these lights that will function as a key light and as the fill slash backlight. And the way that I do that is what I call 2.5 point lighting. The key element is that that is the key light. That's the first thing that must always be in the lighting uh, rig because you want the key light to have the brightest, most diffused light, the most flattering kind of image onto the face. And then with the second light, which is your fill light, you're going to use it to eliminate the shadows that are cast by the key light. And the way that I have a little bit of background separation is to angle the fill light uh, on a mic stand. And the reason why I like mic stands is because there's a lot more flexibility in angling 
the lights. As you can see here with this particular light, I can basically lift it higher and angle this slightly towards myself if I need it to have a bit more uh, focused to uh, not just get rid of shadows but also to have my hair illuminated just a little bit. That way I can fulfill the function of both fill light and the backlight or hair light as or rim light as they may call it in different circles. So I'm going to just wire all this up and I'm going to turn them all on and you can see the effect of using a fill light and a key light in a 2.5 configuration. So this is the image that you're going to get if you only have the ambient lights from your, let's say, home lighting. They're really not that bright at all. As you can see, I am more than two stops of light lower than what is actually required to evenly expose myself. I'm going to turn on the key light and while it is an improvement over the current image, you will see that there will be shadows cast over my face. And as you can see, with just one key light, the lighting is a little bit improved. You can see my face a bit more clearly, but there's a bit of dramatic shadows cast on this side of my face because there's nothing on this side to cancel out the shadows created. And as you can tell, even though I have a softbox and diffuser on my key light, I still have a bit of shadows on this side. I'm now going to turn on my fill light and because it is angled above my head at a particular uh, height above me, when I turn it on, it is also going to function a little bit like a backlight. So you should be able to see that my hair becomes illuminated a little bit so that it gets a little bit of separation from the background. So this image that you see is with two sources of light. The key light, which is providing the main source of illumination. It is lighting my face and giving that a nice little diffuse look on my face. And with the fill light, which is on my other side, I have it angled and elevated so that and you, can, you can see that, you know, as I put my hand up here, you can see that this is quite bright. That's because um, my light is actually further up and elevated a little bit more so that it functions both as a fill light and a backlight. Backlight meaning that my hair gets a little bit illuminated so that there's a bit of subject separation from the background. You certainly can get power adapters for the lights, but I prefer to use batteries because I can freely move them around and set them up as and where I like them to. So you can see that this light here uses two of the battery packs and is slightly uh, set at a lower intensity than this fill light. Excuse me. This is my main key light here. This you can see the diffuser is on. It is a very bright light. And this provides the main source of illumination. This is the fill light slash backlight that I have angled uh, and elevated above me so that I can uh, fulfill the function of both fill and backlight. And this is how it kind of looks like when you're standing in front of the camera. You have the key light here and the fill light here. Okay, uh, Linda asked to comment. Can you comment on the role of... Sorry, my volume's a bit down. <clears throat> so Linda asks, can you comment on the role of a green screen for using other backgrounds? <clears throat> um, Linda, what kind of uh, situation are you talking about? Maybe some context to understand why, uh, what, what, what role of the green screen is in your church context? Okay, not so much of the church context, but you know, on TV, mm. um, sometimes they want to have a, a um, background that can change or so. So they usually use a green screen. Yes. Yeah. Um, the green screen can be used to, uh, well, uh, you mentioned television, and that's that's a great example. Like in newscasting, um, and for yep. for your weatherman, you know, the the they actually talk in front of a green. They talk. What's behind them is a green screen, and mm. uh, the the. Um, the production team has to project onto them behind them the the uh, you know the, the weather system all that uh, green screens can be used to um, what we to what we do uh, what they call overlay like mm, overlays. Right. Mm. Um, most of video most of the video editors today don't doesn't need green screen to have text overlays uh, but if you have a if you want to have a graphic on the screen if you want to have mm -hmm. let's say um, I can put my church logo up here. I can put my, or I can put like a, 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 like you know, a slide picture over here. I will need to use a green screen so that that uh, the the editor can uh, color out, eliminate the green screen. Um, the technology is there. 
I I I can't really get into the science of it because I also don't really understand. I don't know. I know what it does, but I can't really understand it. But um, the computer is uh, uh, programmed to look for green, the color green, and just eliminate it completely. Mm. And sometimes it, uh, some programs can look for green. Some programs can look for black, and uh, black screen is the uh, perhaps the, the the standard used for like in church projection. If you go to if you want to look at your church AV system and uh, your church projection system when they show the lyrics on screen, um, they might be using a black screen uh, uh, to key out the black color of like a lyric video or of a lyric um, lyric text so that you can see the white text in uh, at the bottom of the screen. Mm. Yeah. Um, I was wearing a green, I was using a green screen. I shouldn't wear a green dress there. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's actually it's very funny. Uh, you know how the Queen sometimes wears this very bright green dress, the like Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. Um, and then the <clears throat> and then like 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 you know the day like days after the internet is full of these memes of like the uh, Adobe Photoshop uh, pros who will put in different pictures onto her dress. Yeah, that that's the reason. Uh, the color green is somehow some like it's, it's an industrial standard where we all can. Uh, you know, uh, fade out the color green. They're putting anything you want. That's that's basically what it, what that is. Uh, yeah. If you do use a green screen, don't wear the color green. Don't wear any shade of green. Uh, it's, it's, you might uh, you might end up with like a floating head when you're uh, when you're using green screen. Mm, okay then. <clears throat> okay, um, I'm gonna show this couple of pictures here because, and uh, I also help to. Uh, record for my church and sometimes my folks and my church members come down to to record their parts uh, uh, so that I can you know put them on video right this is the 2.5 lighting that I talked about the key light as I said I mean, as I said before it doesn't matter which orientation you put the key or the fill what matters is the direction the the relative direction if your key is going to be at uh, at uh, one side your fill is going to be on the other side this is what I did with my guitarist friend here uh, a point of caution, though, uh, the because the light is your fill slash backlight is going to be elevated above you and angled, and shining directly on your head, it can show a bit of uh, some unflattering details on your head. So, so you might be, um, it's it's uh, yeah. So, so a caution for for the brothers among us who have a, a receding hairline. If you do have a receding hairline, it it's going to be a lot more prominent because of the. 2.5 lighting that we are doing here. Um, so my lighting rig is not expensive. It's actually, this is considered very cheap already. Um, my total cost is around $320 and that's because the bulk of it is from the lights. You don't have to buy these. Um, okay, it's recommended to buy these first hand and let me tell you why. Uh, the lights all have a, a shelf life and like a, a use life. Uh, you don't know how long the person's been using the the lights for, uh, since they you can ask them when do you buy the lights, and then you can and and you, if you you can ask them um, how frequently you'll be using them. Um, all these bulbs have a a rating of I don't know how many hours before they die. Uh, to maximize, <clears throat> you might be able to get like the lights half off if you buy them from like second hand, but you don't know whether the the bulb rating is gonna last for half the price we get them for. So just save up for the money, get first-hand lights because you never know when your lights are going to die and lights will die because they are, uh, all of us know, right? We, all, we live in houses and our light bulbs uh, definitely will die one day. The same is true for video li lights as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I did buy power supplies and I did buy batteries and I, I, I do have uh, both and I, I like the option of both because with power supplies, um, and the reason and uh, how to differentiate between the users of, of whether to use a power supply or whether to use a battery for the light is do you need it to be mobile? Do you need it to or, or can you fix it permanently onto a, a location? When I shoot videos on my stage, because uh, my home, my house has a my home has a stage area where I put my guitar stuff and music stuff. Uh, my light position doesn't change when I set it up there. So when I use my lights at my stage, I have power supplies to wire everything up and shine the light there. That's okay. But if I'm shooting videos in my home office where I really have changing lighting conditions, the 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 sun will change position, um, the um, excuse me, I don't know why I'm so throaty today. Uh, yeah, 
if you need to your lighting rig to be mobile, if you need to move them around, don't don't get a power supply. Get batteries because that that's when you can really move them around as freely as you as you want. Um, not all batteries are created equal. I spent sixty bucks for uh, for four batteries, and that's kind of like already on the cheaper side. And already I can tell that these batteries don't really last very long. Uh, they, I that I might be able to film um like a, a day's worth of shooting. Uh, you know, like three or four hours of shooting, and that's it. Um, do get if you can do save up for better quality batteries. Uh, if you can, uh, the cheaper ones, if they're dirt cheap, like eight dollars a battery, you know, that, that's probably not gonna last you very long. So just a little bit, note, a little bit to note on the hardware cost side of things. Now that we finish talking about lighting and two point five lighting in my case, let's talk about syncing. And when I talk, and my kind of syncing I'm talking about is lip syncing. Uh, this is a bit of a touchy subject because we want the singers to look like they've memorized the lyrics from start. To finish, I am terrible with lyrics. I'm a music I'm a music director in my church band, and I can memorize notes. I can memorize chords. I can memorize roadmaps for different songs uh, and how they sound like. But I cannot, for the life of me, remember lyrics. And when I lead worship, I'm the kind of guy who needs like the uh, in church. We've got something called a confidence monitor, and that's at the back of the the screen. I always tell my my AV guys to make sure that the confidence monitor is on because I never know when I will like must mess up a word or something in the song. And uh, so the solution to have people um, constantly looking into the camera and singing the correct lyric from start to finish, we want to do something called lip syncing. To lip sync a video, you need to do, you need to record the audio first, then record the video later. This is partly why I decided to arrange the webinar so far in audio production and video production. Because I think that the best way to look, I, I think the, the, the most pro, quote unquote, pro way to look on camera is to have the audio done first so that you can sync the, the video later on. Of course, this is touchy. <laughs> it's, it's touchy because a lot of people uh, might argue that it's not very authentic if you were to film, uh, if you were to do the audio first, then the video later and lip sync later. So it depends on your congregational context. Some people are perturbed by it, others not so. Uh, the churches that comment that lip syncing is wrong, they want to look for authenticity in worship. They are the guys who don't mind us having the earphones like this and looking at our phones or looking at our, our, our scores and singing and not having eye contact with the camera. Other churches, the folks will go, why well, y'all don't look very pro eh? if if the headphones on with the the lyrics in front of you looking down like that not very pro um those are the churches that will prefer um a bit more of the pro approach of lip syncing um so because looking to the camera could be misinterpreted as performance it really depends on your church and how comfortable they are uh if you are the kind of church if your church the kind that cannot um uh if if your if your church is the kind that doesn't appreciate uh, lip syncing and saying that oh it's wrong definitely wrong lip syncing there is an, an, there is another solution and the solution i like to recommend is to record the singers off axis so that the camera captures a side profile instead of a head on profile if i look at the camera and sing head on profile into the camera like this i cannot have anything around the lens because that will definitely signal you know, because that's definitely like like you know it's it's not going to look good uh, a side profile, on the other hand, I can have the camera looking this way at me, and I can have the lyrics in front of me, and you can, and I can sing looking at the lyrics here while the camera captures a side profile. That's one of the ways to get around it. I have a little demo uh, over here. This is, a, this is a song I recorded with my, my drummer friend for Christmas. <laughs> And over here, I'm looking into the camera and I'm looking into the screen. So what you can what what you saw there was that I was essentially set up my camera to the side. I had my 
computer screen in front of me with the lyrics on and you can see the exact moment that i uh had to look into the the camera that i had to look into the computer screen to find the lyrics yeah that's a so that's the thing about about having lyrics um at any point <laughs> in in uh that's the point that's the point of having lyrics uh um elsewhere from apart from the camera as soon as your eyes look to a, another part of the the uh uh s like look to the side of the camera to look for lyrics your camera is going to capture that eye movement and um in my church uh i thought that that um there was some feedback that my that some people were giving me in my church and that the people who were doing this you know looking to the side for lyrics because they set up like lyrics next to the camera right look look to the left or look to the right for the lyrics um some comments we received was that it looked a bit distracting for people to have the eye movement left and right like that <laughs> i don't know what you can see from here or not but like yeah if, if i look into the camera here sing 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 then check lyric oh see my eye move to the left and right the feedback we got was a bit on the uh it was a bit distracting so one way that we eliminated that was the lip sync um and how do we lip sync then i have a solution uh how do i present from here The solution is to use a teleprompter with an inverted lyric video. Um, we, I, I will confess here, Amelia and I, uh, my my colleague at MSM, we didn't memorize the lyrics for Christ, Our Hope, and Life and Death. We were actually singing into a teleprompter, <laughs> teleprompter setup. <clears throat> and let, I'm going to let this short video show you how the teleprompter is set up with the camera and what I'm using to... Uh, show the lyrics on the teleprompter so that uh, uh, I can sing into the camera without uh, losing eye contact with the camera. <clears throat> and for those of you who are familiar with the news uh, um, you know, newsroom news technology, uh, the teleprompter is basically the the a contraption with a mirror that allows newscasters to read their lines uh, as as they come up on the screen uh, without actually having to break eye contact with the camera. So I'm going to I'm going to show the video here. This is a smartphone teleprompter. In other words, it is a teleprompter that is sized for a smartphone at the bottom part over here. And what this is is pretty simple. It is a camera attachment that allows you to attach a lens through this uh, section here. The lens ends up at the end and the edge of the Excuse me, the edge of the glass here. And what this glass does is that it allows light to pass through to the lens. At the same time, it will reflect any uh, thing that is at the bottom here and shoot upwards. So you will be able to see uh, text on the teleprompter screen, but the camera does not see the text because this glass is a specially crafted kind of mirror. And I'll show you very quickly what it does. With a lyric video, I have created an inverted lyric video. So how does the system work? I create an inverted lyric video where I create a set of slides that correspond with the lyric changes in the song. And I made a video out of that. But instead of normal, a normal lyric video where the words are, uh, you know, you can read the words as on the screen, you can see that you can't really read the words here because they are inverted. And uh, the inverted lyric video works by. Christ alone, what is our yeah, it follows along the lyric changes in the song. Next slide change. And this works because when I load my phone onto the teleprompter, you can see that the lyrics are now right side up. And I can press play here on my phone. Comes apart from his command, and what will keep us to the end? Etc. Etc. The so the inverted lyric video displays the lyrics onto a screen, the teleprompter screen here. I can sing the lyrics, and I'll be able to follow along and maintain eye contact with the camera lens, which is most important.
So again, <clears throat> excuse me, it must be all the lack of sleep from taking care of my little daughter. Uh, if that wasn't clear, let me try to explain again. I have a teleprompter set up with this camera here, and what the teleprompter does is that it reflects uh, any inverted text that might be uh, at the bottom, at the base of this side. Actually, you can see here, right? Um, you can see that my hand is touching the base of the 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 teleprompter base plate there. I put my phone here, and my phone will reflect text onto the screen, the mirror, so I can talk to you uh, and looking into the camera whilst um, reading off my phone. So this is a smartphone teleprompter. Uh, I've got a few videos, um, like background videos, that I can show you guys what I did. Uh, let me move this here. Okay. So this is a behind the scenes look. This is Amelia singing into uh, the teleprompter setup. <coughs> So that's the teleprompter. Set up on a tripod. So what you saw there, um, I actually have, uh, because it's a smartphone, right? The smartphone can send, you know, Bluetooth audio to a, to a speaker. So what I did was I played a video, a inverted lyric video on my phone and I have the audio output from a Bluetooth speaker right there. See the little thing down there? This is so that my camera can capture the audio from that speaker because, you know, I can, I can use the camera's onboard microphone. And then I sync the footage from my camera to the completed audio file that I made in post-production. Uh, this is, and this is just another angle. So as you can see, this is quite a mobile setup. All you need is to make the inverted lyric video, bring out a tripod, uh, the camera, the teleprompter, and if you want to, a Bluetooth speaker, and you're able to record uh, uh, the, 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 your singers looking into the camera without much hassle. Let me show you how it, uh, to create an inverted lyric video. Um, for that, we're going to use PowerPoint. <clears throat> And um, we want to have the lyrics flipped around, right? Let's uh, first, um, some considerations. We need the lyric video to have a black background because if, it is a, if, if your lyric video is, has a white background, what's going to happen is it's going to shine too much light from the phone into the camera lens and that's going to mess up your exposure. So you don't want to do that. You want to have a black background with white text. So that, that's uh, uh, tip number one. I'm just going to blank. No, I'm going to lay out. Okay, you don't need this. All right. Your lens is actually going to be in the middle of... I want you to imagine like there's a, a circle in the middle of the screen here. And this is where your camera lens is going to be. Uh, and to have, to maintain maximum eye contact with the lens here, if I put in text on the top here, if your lens is in the middle here, you will still see a little bit of eye movement to read the text on the top left-hand corner. You don't want to do that with a teleprompter text. You want to centralize it and make the text and and align the text to the middle so that this text so that this text it uh it is in this it is in the same area as the lens right here Let's just say this is the lyrics, right? All right, you, you finish typing the lyrics for, for a, um, let's say, a, a section here. And let's say you, you have a few, you know, um, you have 
other slides for verse 2, verse 3, chorus, etc., etc. When you're done, save as, you're going to have to change it to a picture. PowerPoint has this uh, ability to 3D transform pictures, and uh, it cannot 3D transform text. So you have to convert the lyric, the, the, you have to convert these lyric slides into pictures first. So once you're done with your, your lyrics, and make sure everything's spell checked correct, everything's done, save as, and you can click on the save as here. You're going to change the file format to PNG, Portable Network Graphics Format. So name anything here, just this, oh, nope, this one, number two, let's see. So just this one, you know. Okay, you're going to you're going to remove all this, and then you are going to drag and drop your lyric slide this way. So let's say you got verse you know, verse one, verse two, chorus. I mean, they're all the same now, but eventually you have verse one, verse two, chorus. What you want to do is you want to flip this by 180 degrees so that it becomes inverted. How do you do that? If you right click and you choose format picture, you can see it comes up with this little menu here, right? Uh, hit down to what well, you see 3D rotation. Then on X rotation over here, you are going to type in 180 degrees. Voila, this has now flipped. It looks weird to us right now because we are looking at it as it is, but when you put it under a teleprompter, it will show right side up in the correct orientation direction. So if you have, you can format this. Um, you just repeat this for each and every slide that you do. Uh, for every slide that you... Um, in general, most songs have six or seven lyric slides to invert, which is not too problematic and not too concord. Uh, but if you do have more slides and you want to, to repeat the format of, uh, of, let's say, flipping this, right? You can apply the same format to every other slide by using the format painter, right? Uh, you, can, you can read the, what, what happens, uh, you, can, you can read the specific menu command uh, at your own time. Um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to show you the procedure. Click on the item that has already been inverted, your first slide that's already been inverted. Double click the format painter so, so that right now PowerPoint is going to, uh, PowerPoint has recognized that you want to invert all these slides. Okay, you like the format? I'm going to apply the same format to other pictures that you choose. Go to the next slide, click on it, and it will invert. Go to the next slide. You see the, the little pane symbol on next to the arrow? Click on it and it will invert. So this is how you quickly invert. Uh, let's say if you have more than 8 or 10 slides. You won't have 8 or 10 slides, but in case you have more than 8 or 10 slides and it's a bit of a hassle to every slide must go to, uh, uh, must go to okay, 3D rotation, 180, 3D rotation, 180, 3D rotation, 180. Instead of doing all that 10 times, use the format painter. Uh, I'm going to repeat this process again because it can be quite uh, it can be quite confusing. So let's let's start again. Let's say, let's say you finish your lyric slides, you export them as PNG, you import them, re-import them into a PowerPoint. You have to invert the first slide by clicking on 3D rotation, 180. You like this format? Tell Tell PowerPoint you like the format by double-clicking Format Painter. Wait for a little bit of time. Then click on your other slides. Click on slide number two. Hover your mouse over the slide, the picture. Click. Go to the next slide. Hover over the, uh, the, the picture. Click. And that's how you invert all these slides together. Okay. Then when you're done, you can save again. Save as. And you want to save it as a PNG. Portable, yeah, portable graphics network. Oops. And save your slides out there. So I'm not going to do that because I already have already done so. Um, I'm going to show you how that, okay, just, for, just quickly because we have a bit of time, I'm going to show you uh, what that looks. I'm going to show you how the lyric, uh, um, how I created a, the inverted lyric video. Uh, it's all here, teleprompter. Okay, 
I import the the flip. You can see here my on in the in my media bin. Uh, I have got the lyrics, uh, the lyric slides, all inverted. I then have. I then put the audio file of the song, and then I drag and drop the different slides to correspond with the, uh, the lyrics of the song. So you can see here. Um, this is verse. This is verse one going to the chorus, or rather, this is verse one going to. Uh, the second half of verse one. That our souls to him belong, who holds our days within his hand. What comes upon? Then I go, I go to the next. I, I'll just go to near the next transition, right? So you can see, uh, uh after a while, when you work with these, after a while, you'll be able to read a bit of the inverted text. Uh, the love of Christ in which we stand. That's the that's the last line. Before, right? That's the last line before the next slide change. Next picture. Oh, sing hallelujah, our hopes. So once you're done this, once you've you've made this inverted lyric video, you can export it out and you can send it to your singers. If they have teleprompters of their own, they'll be able to set it up, put it on the camera, uh, have this on their smartphones, put it on here, press play, and then they can sing and uh, uh, look into the camera uh, at, you know, and it would be the most professional looking thing that, that this is the most professional looking option that we can do. And this is for uh, what we want to do to lip sync our singers. So let me talk about a little bit about the hardware needed. What you need, you need a teleprompter. The teleprompter that I have is pretty cheap. It's about $50 from China. You can get the really, the, the thing is, if you go to the US and Amazon, right, and you want to buy uh, teleprompters, you can. But those kind of teleprompters from, let's say, Parrot, they cost upwards of $200 for a teleprompter. Uh, I've used, I use this China $50 no brand teleprompter. It works. So um, I might link, I, I, I'll try to find a link to the teleprompter that I bought, the specific model from Lazada. So you guys can check it out as well. You need the teleprompter with a smartphone attachment so you can play the lyric, the inverted uh, uh, lyric video. Then you need a tripod uh, to mount the teleprompter setup because the teleprompter doesn't come with a tripod. You have to supply it yourself to fix it up. And then, yeah, make a flipped lyric video to play on a smartphone. That is for syncing. Now we are talking about the next technique and that is on using B-roll. What is B-roll? Um, as if you remember the video that I showed uh, that we worshiped with just now, the video wasn't just one static camera angle of Amelia and myself all the way. I interspersed it with different types of shots, different um, different camera angles, um, different types of movement. Uh, there's some dynamic uh, information. There's you know some some of the footage was like you know uh, it was a, a moving shot, where you move from left to right. Others was an overhead shot where I can also move left and right pan shots, right? Um, that is those short kind of shots, those that are different from the main camera angles of just looking at me this way. It's called B-roll. In cinema, the principal footage, it comes from cinema uh, uh, and comes from Hollywood and filmmaking. Uh, you've got your A-roll, which is like the main camera angle, then the B-roll, which is for the different perspective. They are shot at the same time. Uh, camera A, and shooting the main you know characters camera b is the one that's shooting from the side shooting with a moving over camera etc etc and b roll is mainly used for fillers and transitions so when we talked uh when when we watched the video earlier the video had a few places where i put in that uh, uh the b roll right uh let's just very quickly uh, i'll show you one of the things about B okay, so so <laughs> this opening shot here that I use for Christ, I hope in Lion Death, um, it was slightly cheesy, but I think I, I quite liked it because it, it was you know it's it's just artistic line, you know. Um, I had Amelia time herself to walk in front of the piano and play that first chord.
So that's the same. It's the same. Uh, we shot this. Uh, uh, this angle here is an overhead shot. I put my. Um, this is the. This is the camera that I use for all of the B-roll shots, and I is a small lightweight camera that I can I, I put a a selfie stick and mount it there so I can extend it and have it over Emilia's hands as as we as she plays it. As she plays the song. What is our hope in life and death? Um, that is the way I use B-roll as as a way to intro as to use as introduction, to use as interludes, um, and also for, uh, I'll, I'll show you the other interlude that we did, and uh, right here. Another Ovid shot. And now, a moving pan shot. So, that, that's what that's what b-roll is you can use b-roll to enhance the visual interest of the of the the uh of the song and um and because this is a budget <laughs> we did this on a budget i was the only camera crew the only camera person we had to record the same thing uh several times plan your shot beforehand if you know you want uh, nine different perspectives or nine different uh, angles of of uh of your your shot right of your subject that means you need to record the same thing nine times <laughs> you want if you um for amelia to for me to capture amelia playing the lead line from this perspective one shot for for me to have for her to play um this is another shot this is the same lead line but i to have the camera hanging over her let's see this is yet another one this is another overhead shot different from from the from the first overhead shot this overhead number two which is a different camera angle and of course this shot there same line but i had to shoot using um i had to shoot with the movie perspective here so the same lead line the same piano lead line da, 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 da. i shot four different camera angles uh, so that I can weave them in and out depending on the uh, depending on uh, how I wanted to creatively show the uh, uh, in the video and <laughs> this is what I call uh, okay in in the land of in photography world and videography world there's something called the photographer's plight and that is because the photographer is the is is the one behind the camera, right? He doesn't have that much opportunity to film himself. So I did a lot of B-roll for Amelia because I was shooting the the I was shooting all of it, right? With um, and I know how to shoot. Um, Amelia doesn't know how to shoot camera and uh, shoot video, and you know, and, and I didn't have anyone else to help me with that. So my B-roll of my camera angles and my acoustic guitar all very limited. I didn't have any pan moving shots. I didn't have any dolly shots. I didn't have um. I wasn't able to get those nice um, uh, 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 panned left-right shots because I I couldn't do it. No one could do it for me, um, but I could do it for Amelia. So there's one thing to consider as well. Uh, if you can, uh, do get your your video crew right. If you if you really can, the ideal world situation is that you have two different crews at the same location. Crew A is the one that shoots the principal photography. Your main camera angle, the one that that uh, is maybe the static cam for for the the worship leader or the singers and musicians. Then your second crew is the one who will shoot the B roll. So everyone has got the chance to to be featured, uh, not just on the main camera angle like this, but also on the uh, on other perspectives, the side, um, overhead, uh, zoomed in on their hands, um, the what what the guitar is playing. Um, two questions to ask. The, the main question to ask when uh, when, when planning B-roll is: Is there anything interesting happening? Uh, we want to use the B-roll to enhance our uh, our footage, and to enhance it, we want to uh, capture the points of interest. The points of interest in a song are the introduction, the instrumentals, the interludes, and that's where the interesting thing happen. Um, Cuts, hangs, drops, and dimex. These are all the things. This depends on the song. Some songs have this very um, do do chat bang. And then everyone like cuts together at the same time. 
it's the drummer doing that hard cut, you know, it's the it's the bass player doing a slight note. You know? Um to have those split second shots of them doing a, a, a guitar slide or a bass slide or the or the drummer uh you know doing a cymbal choke. Um uh, as you can see, you know, when I do when even from this webcam angle you can see, when I do these big dramatic movements, it is quite um, you can see that there's some visual interest when I when I make these big dramatic movements on camera. Use that to your advantage. B roll is we should be using B roll to enhance the the video, uh, so that. Uh, um, but but you have to remember, <laughs> B roll. Uh, that there's a point in time if you use B roll too much, it can distract instead of enhance, uh, and. You really need to test your congregation on this. Your con every congregation is different. Some congregation, mem uh, uh, some congregations, are not distracted by the by the number of of B roll shots put in. In fact, there are some churches right where the the worship video has uh, the B roll footage of like stock footage right of like you know um uh, the 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 scenery of of flying through the mountains <laughs> or flying in the sky with the blue clouds or. Uh, footage of um, uh, uh, walking in the woods, those sorts of that that kind of stock footage as B-roll. Some churches love that. Other churches who may not, and, and again, this is on the authenticity spectrum. The churches that strive for authentic worship might not be the kind of church that has too much B-roll. In fact, they might be okay with just one camera angle and that's it. Um, again, ask yourself, uh, ask, and this is a question that you need to answer for your church. The, do all these things, B-roll, um, uh, stock footage, do they distract or do they enhance? And if they do enhance, uh, this is the chance for you guys to exercise your creativity to uh, come up with something that is that has uh, uh, that, that tells the story more effectively, that tell, communicates the the excitement in the story. You know, um, it's one thing to look at one camera angle and and have the guitar playing passionately, but it's quite another. It's quite another when you're able to capture the moment he does something very dramatic on on camera from like a different perspective and zoomed in. It has it just brings up that energy level that much more visually. And uh, the time now is nine twelve. It's excellent time because I want to dedicate twenty minutes or so for Q and A. I have covered three things. I've covered the uh, uh, I've covered lighting technique, uh, and in my case, I use two lights for my main lights to illuminate my subjects. I've covered lip syncing, and uh, to do that, I have shown you all how I use a teleprompter and an inverted lyric video on my phone in order to um, have the best possible professional-looking setup so that I can sing into the camera while still reading lyrics. And finally, I talked about how I used B-roll to enhance the footage from uh, for worship video by recording the same thing from different perspectives. Uh, you can see with, with the B-roll has got um, moving shots. It's got uh, a sense of dynamism, a sense of it, it's a sense of energy, and uh, that helps to communicate the story a bit more uh, effectively. I think. So at this point, I will take any questions, and uh, before we we consolidate and conclude. You can text into the chat or you can unmute yourself. And while that's happening and waiting, I will take a bit of a drink. Okay, maybe as we are waiting for a question, let me just screen share again to show you the total cost. I talk a little bit about um, how much I spend on this uh, professional hobby. <laughs> 
So I shared the site with you guys last week, and um, I will send out the actually I forgot to send out the site from last week, so I will remember to do it by 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 today or by tomorrow. I'm so sorry, you know, because uh, <laughs> my life has been turned upside down. Um, I have spent uh, a total of like five thousand over dollars on my video and camera gear, uh, and this is just the video stuff. I have a bit more stuff with the camera stuff, which I uh, I mean the photography stuff, which I won't share here because not but not pertinent um your expensive pieces of gear is going to be mainly uh it's going to be your camera body this is actually quite cheap for a camera um i have seen uh okay right now right this is old technology right now the cameras are really good you've got uh mirrorless cameras which are smaller uh and at the same time they also record at higher resolutions so like the canon r5 or the r6 they may be three thousand over dollars for just a body, or four thousand dollars for just a body, but they're really good. The 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 footage is just insanely detailed. I love the color, I love the situation, etc., etc. Um, and that's just Canon. You know, go out, experiment with the different types of uh, uh, bodies. See which one you like. What I like about Sony is that they don't make you commit to buying a camera to try it out. I'm not sure about Malaysia, but in Singapore, uh, Sing Sony Singapore allows you to rent out a camera at, um, I, I can't remember the price, like something like $50 a day or something. Um, and it's also just so that, that people can rent out the really expensive G Master lenses. Uh, you you may, you, you could get away with going to the shop and playing around with a, a, a camera to physically touch it and to see whether you like the system or not. But it really takes about a day or two to familiarize yourself with the camera functions and to shoot different types of footage with the camera. Um, Sony has the renting the, a rent rent a gear system, which which is, I think is quite decent to let people try out various gear before committing to buy. Um, the second most expensive piece of equipment that you're going to get after the camera body is the camera lens. And my lens here is, uh, I put here $700, that's the second hand price. The lens that on this camera right now normally goes for about $900 over dollars. Um, and if, and this, the specs here is 18 to 35 f1.8. Uh, the price goes up very quickly, the lower the f-stop goes down to. An F1.2 lens is going to be easily $2,000 over dollars. Um, and that's because it takes that much more effort to create a lens that can go that low at f-stop. And also, uh, this, this particular lens, um, what's really cool is that you can maintain the f-stop number at any length of the zoom. At 18 millimeters, you can put F1, F1.8. At 35 millimeters, when you zoom in, it's still f1.8. That is a very expensive feature. Um, if you have a cheaper lens, with a, a cheaper lens doesn't keep the f-stop constant as you zoom in. It might be, okay, you see this number here? You see this sigma, sigma 70 to 300? You see how there are two numbers in the f-stop, f4 to f5.6? This tells me that at 70 millimeters at the, at the unzoomed uh, length of the lens, it's f4. But, if I were to zoom in all the way to 300 millimeters, I cannot get f4. I cannot get the lens to shoot at f4. The lowest uh, f stop at 300 millimeters is going to be f5.6, which is 1.6 of stop, 1.6 stops of light uh, less than f4. And I tell you, one stop of light makes a very big difference in the way the 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 the, the image is going to look like on camera. Um, and then. Uh, the third piece of gear, which might be expensive, but I didn't include here, is gimbals and stabilizers. Now, what is a gimbal? A gimbal is a piece of equipment that basically um, it keeps the camera steady. And no matter where you move, left or right, up or down, uh, you, the problem with if you just shoot a camera like this, just handheld, handheld footage is going to be shaky because every point of contact that your hand makes it's going to introduce a little bit of shake to the camera, so you can see a little bit of wobbliness in the in the footage. A gimbal, uh, and especially a motorized gimbal, is going to be a device that has motors, has counterweights on each side of the camera, and a motorized so that they automatically correct for any shake they introduce. 
if you see very smooth footage, let's say the pan shot is, is like seamlessly left to right, no shake at all, that's probably done on a gimbal. And gimbals can go very expensive. They can go up in excess of thousand of dollars for a good DSR gimbal. Um, but if you're making s slow, if you're doing very small side-to-side uh, uh, -side shots, you can get away with it handheld because right now in today's technology, some cameras like the ZV-1 have very good in-body image stabilization. Um, and the, 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 the stabilization technology is so good that if, a, if, it, if you just very slowly move from left to right, you won't detect that much of a camera shake. And this is a recent, this is quite recent. Uh, cameras, uh, newer cameras will definitely have, have better stabilization technology. Your older cameras, not so much. They're gonna have, you're gonna have a lot more shaky cam. If you try to use handheld on, let's say a Canon DSLR um, that does not have in-body image stabilization. IBIS, that's the short form for it. So yes, so this is the extra bit of tidbit information for costing, <laughs> costing purposes. Again, you can comment on the chat, and I can uh, I can probably answer questions there, or you can yeah unmute yourself. I think I'll give you the power too, right? Let me check. Security. Allow participants. Yeah, you all can unmute yourselves. I'm also watching the time because uh, my little one's routine um, is between two and three hours. I last fed her at 7.30 p.m. So 9.22 is kind of like the the time where she might be starting to fuss a little bit. And uh, hopefully I can go and help my wife out. <laughs> Okay, if not, let me carry on to the conclusion and then I can end the time that we have together. In conclusion, audio and video production is both a science and an art. The science behind what we are doing here with the past five webinars, audio production and video production, is that we have to know the technical things and knowing uh, and appreciating the technical information uh, and how settings, different settings, affect your end product. In in the land of audio production, uh, we need to know uh, how we want the song to sound like at the end, and then we need to know the settings that we need to tweak in order to achieve that creative end product for the sound. As for video production, we know we need to know uh, and conceive in our mind how the image, what we want the image to look like. Uh, how we want the, the 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 footage to to be assembled in the final cut, and we need to know the settings and we need to know the various tools that we have at our disposal to achieve that end. So the science is knowing all the technical things like what what the buttons do, what the knobs do. Uh, if I push this up or down, well, how does it affect the image? The art is that the art in all of these processes is that we want to communicate the story of the song. With the tools that we have. We have the greatest story to tell. That is the love of Jesus Christ. And when we put our uh, uh, hands, our heads and hearts together to communicate that story, how is that story being told with our worship videos, with our worship songs? How is that story being told with our choirs? In this day and age where video and audio production is of paramount importance because we cannot meet physically and we are separated by COVID-19 measures. We have the digital media and the digital world to reach out and to uh, teach our congregation how to worship, to show them and lead them in worship. Uh, ultimately, we want these tools, the video and the audio, to serve that purpose, to tell that story. So how are you telling that story? My encouragement is that 
if your church is still if your church is in the uh, uh, is is using a smartphone to live stream from a pastor's home, and if that is your offering of worship, keep doing it. Hang in there. Keep doing that because this is your offering of worship. This is your alabaster jar that you bring before the Lord Jesus, and it's beautiful. Um, if you're in a church that wants to level up and wants to honor God with uh, with leveling up, wants to involve your technical team to do more to 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 bring to bring this a different kind of offering that is going to be your offering unto the Lord, and the Lord is blessed, and the Lord is I think He is pleased by by both products, whether it's professional looking like this or whether it's it's amateur, whether it's on, on the amateur side of the spectrum with just a phone recording. In either case, God is glorified, and I hope that with this series of uh, of webinars that if you do want to upskill, if you do want to, to gain a, a bit more appreciation as to, as, as to getting uh, a you know, higher production value in your audio and video, may this be the starting point, a springboard for you to bring that offering of worship to the Lord. It takes a lot of practice. <laughs> the, the things that I've done, uh, the things that I'm doing for MSM and for church, it wasn't an overnight thing. Um, I started my... And if I were to be honest, I started. Uh, I only started to get a hang of this after years of doing videos by myself. I have a YouTube channel, and that YouTube channel is currently eleven years old, I think, or eleven or twelve years old. My first few videos were oh, so cringeworthy. It's it's um, you know failure, and I I really don't like the way the the footage looks, but or, the, or how it sounds. But I learned along the way how to improve, how to upskill. So my encouragement to you is this. If you do want to upskill, you won't get it right the first time round, second time round, third time round. You get it right maybe on the 20th time, 40th time, 50th time. The key thing is to keep at it. You will improve. Um, it took me 11, 12 years to get to where I am right now in both audio and video production. But that's because I'm not a very sciencey person. I'm not I'm not really I'm really not that skilled or talented in this area. Some of you guys who are A V trained, who who know how to do this, you know, who know A V at the back of your hand, you can get it done in maybe twelve weeks, maybe twelve months, instead of twelve years like me. Uh, <clears throat> again, I want to reiterate uh what is the story, how are we telling our story, uh the story of the love of Jesus and uh and I want to encourage you that whether it's professional looking or amateur looking, that is going to be our offering of worship to God and God is pleased. Without further ado, let me close us with a word of prayer and then we can call it a night. Come, let us pray. Our gracious and heavenly Father, we have come to the end of a series of very technical things. It might be very startling for some of my friends here tonight. But I ask and I pray for, uh, for, for, for clarity from the Holy Spirit. Lord, is this where you want us to go? Lord, is, is this what you want us to do with our resources, with our ministry members? And if, and if so, we pray that doors be open. We pray that minds be open. We pray that processes be be, be put in place, the opportunities be available so that people can be mobilized, that resources can be spent, that people can come together to bring an offering of worship, whether it looks pro, whether it's amateur. We want these to be our, our offerings to you, and we know that, that you are pleased with them. I pray for my brothers and sisters here tonight that as they go back home to their churches to, uh, to apply what they've learned, I pray for grace. I pray for, for more measures of grace. Grace in that, that the ministries will, will uh, be open-minded. Grace in the leadership levels that they, will, uh, they might talk about and approve the spending for some of this equipment. Uh, but, but more than that, grace to, to, uh, for everyone to be captured by the vision that when that what we that all that we are doing is for your glory and your glory alone. 
This we ask in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ and all God's people say, Amen. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for coming for tonight. Um, this is the end of a journey for, for some of us. <laughs> and uh, I hope that um, after this, uh, and uh, I'll, still see, I'll still see some of you in other webinars as we go along. It certainly isn't the last of the, the skills training workshops for MSM. There's going to be more. And when they come out, I'll, I will make sure that you guys will know what they are, when they are, and uh, how we can further bless you uh, 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 as, as life goes on in, the, in our church today.